I was seven, my parents got divorced and we moved to a new town. We moved in right next door to grandma and grandpa. The grandpa took me under his wing. Gramps was a old German guy with a with an easy smile and a quirky sense of humor. Uh, when I was 18, he gave me this box all wrapped up and inside that was another box and another box, five boxes and all. And inside the innermost box was a red onion. That was my birthday present. He also taught me stuff. He taught me, for instance, how to make things with my hands, how to build a garden. And when he did, he would wink. And then he'd say, see, Stu? For years, I thought that he had a pet name for it. I thought he was calling me Stu. Well, I found out much later that see, Stu in German means do you see? So I had the right message, but the wrong language. Well, the move was kind of difficult for me. When I went to school, I found out the teacher didn't like me at all. She was quite mean to me. And one day, toward the end of school, I had to go to the bathroom. I raised my hand, but she didn't seem to see me. And I started getting kind of frantic about it. So I started waving my hand. I was kind of jumping up and down and she, she at one point looked right at me, shook her head no, and went back to teaching. I couldn't hold it. I, 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 I peed my pants. And when she figured out what had happened, she looked right at me and said, uh, well, I guess you better go home then. So I had to get up in front of the whole class, humiliated, and I walked home. And I spent that night just making myself sick with worry about all the terrible things that were gonna happen the next day. The kids were gonna be mean to me, they were gonna tease me, it was gonna be horrible. And by the next morning, I was physically sick. And I told mom I was in too much pain, I couldn't go to school. She was having none of it. She said, no, you have to face this, you have to deal with it. Well, we argued, she pushed me outside and locked the door. And I was out there on the front porch, just screaming bloody murder. I couldn't face the day. It was gonna be horrible. I was in too much pain to go to school. Well, after a while, she came out, took me over to grandma and grandpa's house, said, you deal with this kid, I have to go to work. Grandma started lecturing me right away and grandpa said, no, no, I'll take care of it. He took me downstairs, said, we're gonna make sauerkraut. There's two steps in making sauerkraut and the first step grandpa had this, it was a kraut cutter, about three feet long, it's about this wide and it had these diagonal blades in the bottom and these two rails and there was an open wooden box that sat in those rails. You could slide it back and forth and you put the cabbage in the box and slide that back and forth. And that those blades would slice the cabbage into fine ribbons. And then you could take a crock, five gallon crock, and you put a layer of cabbage and then salt, cabbage, salt, cabbage, salt, all the way full. And then you take a butter churn and you would pound that down. You'd bruise that cabbage and compress it. And with the salt, it would give up its water. And once you got that all compressed and beat down, then you take a layer of cheesecloth and put that on there and some big heavy rocks and weight it down so that cabbage was compressed and submerged under that briny, salty cabbage water. That was step number one. And then step number two was you leave it set. After about a week, the whole basement would smell like something had died in there. And that's when it started working. And then you leave it another two or three weeks 
until it smelled like whatever had died, it was resurrected and then died again. And then you put on a gas mask and you go down and you'd pull all that stuff off of there, that cheesecloth and those rocks. And underneath there would be a layer about this thick with this rotten, green, slimy, nasty smelling cabbage. And you just skim that off the top and throw it away. And underneath was the sweetest, most incredible taste in sauerkraut you can ever imagine. Well, we had done step number one. We got everything prepared. We went upstairs. It had been hard work. We'd been on our feet all day. Grandpa was leaning on his crutch so hard, I thought he was going to break it. Now, he always wore a crutch. He always walked with a crutch, but I'd never really thought about it before. Well, this time he was really leaning on it. And he got to his easy chair, he sat down, asked me to get him his kit from the bathroom. When I came back out, he had pu pulled up his pant leg and his shin, the bone was bent like this. And it was twisted in so that the foot was kind of turned inward. And right there where that bone was bent, the skin was bright red and it was stretched so tight, I thought it was gonna split wide open. Well, he put some liniment on that took a handful of aspirin, and I asked him what had happened. He said, well, when he was my age, about seven, he had broken that leg, but his parents were new immigrants. They didn't really speak English very well. They hadn't built up any kind of network of friends yet, and they didn't know how to access the medical system, and so, they set that leg the best they could, but it was never set right. And over the next couple of years, he broke that leg six more times. And then he told me this poem. He said, when I was young and I had no sense, I bumped my head against the fence. The fence was rough and I was tough and you bet your life I'd had enough. Then he winked. He said, see Stu and he went to sleep. And I realized that from the day he was my age, every day, every day, he had experienced moments of excruciating pain. I'm sure there were days he just did not want to get up and face it, but he never let that define who he was. And so now when I think about how horrible things are gonna be when I start working myself up thinking about the terrible things that are going on. I think about grandpa and the sauerkraut and I take those worries and those concerns and I just skim them off the top so I can taste that sweet life underneath.